Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be going through how to install Solus. We'll first download it, then I'll explain how to flash it onto a disk, we'll boot that disk, and finally run through how to install it on an empty storage of your choice. So recently, Solus 4.1 Fortitude was released, and I'm here on the Solus website where you can see the four different desktop versions that they have available. If we scroll down, you can see all the information about the new Solus 4.1 Fortitude release and new features as well as updated programs and what they've done to the kernel. They also have started using Z-Standard which will make the installations quicker and with their claims three to four times quicker. There's also been updates to the multimedia and an upgraded system D. A few other things are added. I'll let you go ahead and go through all those items and you can actually look at specific things that were upgraded per desktop environment. So you got Budgie here, GNOME, Mate, as well as Plasma. So let's go back to the top where we can go ahead and hit the download button and we can select between one of the four desktop environments that we want. Since Budgie is developed by Solus, I'm gonna go ahead and choose that one today. So there's really two options. You can select the closest mirror to you or you can select through all the mirrors and pick one that you like. There is a hash available in order to make sure that whatever you download is in fact, Solus. We're gonna go ahead and hit the closest button and it's beginning to go ahead and download Solus for us. If you're new and stopping by to watch an install today, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more videos. And now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to launch and use the Belena Etcher app in order to flash the image onto a USB or CD of my choice. So let's go ahead and search for Belena Etcher and launch it. Belen Etcher is an easy to use application available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below if you want to download the application. You can also use any other application that can create a bootable disk such as Rufus or UNet boot in. What we'll first do is select an image and that image is going to be the one that we just got done downloading. So as you see here, I have the Solus 4.1 Budgie image. This is for a 64-bit architecture, so make sure that you're installing it on a 64-bit machine. Go ahead, hit open. And then next, you can go ahead and insert your USB, CD, or DVD where you want to flash Solus 4.1 onto. If you have more than one USB in your computer, make sure to go ahead and hit change and select the correct one. Because once you begin flashing, it will erase all the current data on the USB, CD, or DVD and flash the Solus image onto it. I know I want to go ahead and use the SanDisk Cruiser one, so I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. And finally, we can hit flash to begin. Go ahead and give it administrative privileges. And after you flash the disk, you'll take it over to a computer or server where you want to install Solus on and then insert it. Then you'll have to boot into your BIOS in order to change the settings around and select a newly created bootable disk to boot first. This is usually done by finding the correct key to boot into your BIOS for your particular computer. It's usually one of the F keys such as F2 or F10. Then you'll find a tab called boot order and you'll have to exchange the order so that the bootable disk is first to boot. After you have that set up, you will save and exit out of your BIOS and you should see a screen similar to this if you did everything correctly. If you went ahead and made it this far, please take a moment to go ahead and hit the like button. It really does help me out. All right, and if you see the screen, you've successfully made it to the install portion. Yours might have automatically already started Solus, but I went ahead and quit out of the automatic sequence so I can go ahead and show you how to start Solus with the initial boot up. So let's go ahead and hit start Solus. Give it a moment here. And once we've loaded into the live Solus image, we're going to go ahead and go to the bottom here where you'll see launch install OS. Go ahead and click that little box. And this is where we can go ahead and begin using the installer for Solus. First thing it's asking us to do is to go ahead and choose a language for the installer. We're going to go ahead and select English United States for this one and hit next. If you want to go ahead and speed things up, you can select the find my location automatically and then the Solus installer can go ahead and gauge where you're currently located so it can make sense of the proper time zone as well as language. I'm not gonna go ahead and select this option. I wanna go ahead and manually put those in. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit next here. Now I'm asked for a keyboard layout. Mine is the English US keyboard layout and I'm gonna go ahead and test that down here in this text field by just typing some letters. I have QWERTY in here, that's what I typed and that's what came out so everything looks good to me. Then I'm going to hit next once I've verified everything. And since I didn't let it find my location, I'm going to go ahead and select a time zone. Today I'm going to be in Vancouver. And then I'm going to hit next. Following that, it's asking us where we want to install this image onto. 
If you have multiple storage spaces in your computer, you'll be able to use this drop down to select whatever storage space you want to install Solus on. Just make sure that you have no data on that storage space that you select because everything will be erased from it in order to install Solus. And the first option will work well for us. Automatically partition this empty disk and install a fresh copy of Solus. Again, that's gonna wipe everything on the disk. So make sure you select the correct one that you wanna use. And then we'll go ahead and hit next. You have a few more options here. You can either encrypt the uh, new installation that you're creating or you can uh, use the LVM option on the new installation. So all the logical volume management does for you, it allows for you to be able to resize the disk space with an easier method instead of having to unmount it and change it through a live disk. This is really good for uh, things such as virtual machines. I do suggest installing it if you do have a virtual machine. But if you know the amount of space that you're going to use and it's gonna be fixed, LVM really won't help you much. I'm not gonna go ahead and select this this time. So uh, I'll keep both those options unselected and hit next. And on this screen, we're gonna go ahead and put in a host name. This is what's going to appear on your local network when other devices search for this Linux Solus install. So I'm just gonna type in Savvy Nick for myself. You can type in whatever you want. And an important checkbox here is to install the bootloader and it asks you where, so make sure the same hard disk where you're installing Solus on is selected and that we want to install the bootloader unless you already have one that you plan on using it's best if you go ahead and just select that option go ahead and hit next once you're ready and here we're asked for a username so besides root we're going to create another user so my username i'm going to create savvy nick and real name is savvy nick put in a password and go ahead and confirm that password here the standard option is that the user will receive administrative capabilities. If you add more than one user, then you'll be able to select different privileges. So uh, let's say we added another one. Now this time you can go ahead and select the checkbox whether or not it has administrative capabilities. But the very first user always has them by default in this Linux distribution. I'm just gonna cancel out of here because I only want Savvy Nick, but it's good to know. You can always hit that plus button and add in as many users as you want. Let's say you have the different family members that you expect to use this computer, but you don't want them messing up the computer with administrative privileges. It'd be perfect to go ahead and add one without, add another user without those privileges. Go ahead and hit next once you're ready with your users. In the following screen, we'll just review the installation options you have selected. So it tells you here what language and region you're using. So again, English United States for me, English US for the default uh, keyboard layout. My time zone is the American Vancouver one. As far as the installation goes, it's gonna create a MS-DOS partition table on a disk called SDA, and it's going to create a one gig of swap space also on SDA and followed by 33.36 gigs for the repartition where we'll keep our file system. Users created is one administrative user called Savvy Nick and uh, the system details are host name so what other computers will see us as is Savvy Nick. It will install the bootloader on the SDA, the, disk, the new disk that we're creating. So let's go ahead and uh, once you've confirmed these options and everything looks right, hit install. Finally here, it's looking for a confirmation that you want to go ahead and erase whatever's currently on the disk that you had selected. So it says right here, it can result in a data loss. So make sure again that the storage space you're trying to install to is in fact clean of everything. And then go ahead and hit the okay once you're ready. And the install is now beginning. This will take a few moments here. The Solus distribution deploys a custom desktop environment, Budgie which focuses on a simple environment for home computing and is designed with a minimal learning curve in mind. Also, their desktop environment comes with, the, with most of the everyday software that a beginner user needs, including a browser, office suite, and multimedia apps. They focus all over the spectrum with focuses for developers, content creators, and gamers, and give support to all these communities as well, making it a very nice encompassing distribution if you want to install it. And while rebooting, you'll want to make sure to go ahead and remove any installation media that you may have in the computer so you don't boot back into the live image of the Solus installer. Or else you'll have to shut down the computer, remove the media, and then start it over again so you can get into your new install of Solus. Let's go ahead and hit restart now. Give it a moment here. And once things are finished booting up, 
you'll be greeted by the user screen where you can go ahead and select a user and type in a password. Go ahead and do that. And once the desktop is loaded, you're now on your freshly installed Solus Linux Budgie desktop environment. Congratulations, you've successfully installed everything. Now sometimes it's hard to tell whether or not uh, that you actually have the proper install. One way to check is if you go down here and hover over this, it says launch software center instead of install Solus. That's really the first thing to look at just to make sure that you didn't boot into the live image again. If you do see this, you've successfully installed everything. Let's go ahead and take a look around the desktop real quick. You can go ahead and right click on the background. You cannot add icons to the background here, I believe. But here at the bottom left, you have a start menu where you can go ahead and select through applications. You have various categories as well as a search bar available to you. And inside of every category, you can go ahead and look at all the applications that are available. Of course, this is the all category, so I see every application available here. It looks like they deploy the LibreOffice suite for you. So you have a word processor, spreadsheets, other various office essentials available to you right off the bat. Uh, a couple other things here. Let's see, what else do we have? Some settings, so connect uh, Bluetooth devices up, as well as desktop settings here. Uh, Gnome media player for you, as well as Thunderbird for an email client. And then at the bottom here, you have the software center launch, as well as the file manager launch. Firefox is the default web browser, so you can launch that here as well as GNOME MVP for their multimedia player and Rhythmbox for a music player. Then on the right hand side you can click on this little button here which brings up widgets as they call them applets and has a calendar as well as some music control. If you click the button again it will hide that screen and then you have the time as well as a button where you can control the current user who's lo logged in and suspend, restart, or shut down the computer. Then you have volume control followed by notifications. They'll show up in here and if you click this, right now I have no notifications coming in. But uh, the final thing is the connected connection that you have. It says that I have an ethernet network with a wired connection one. So I do currently have internet access. Well that's it for this installation tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.